British Planet. Appunti di inglese. A cura di Nicholas Yuldon. Good evening, you're listening to Internet Radio, uh, Radio Dreamland, webcasting from Piedmont in northern Italy. This is English Planet, uh, a show which uh, tries to teach a little bit of English for students of English, whether Italian or around the world, including a sort of listening comprehension where you can uh, listen to events or news from the world of the invisible. Your presenter this evening, as usual, is uh, Nick Yuldon. Right, uh, this evening uh, we're going to start with uh, a little surprise. A, a sort of quick quiz. A game of trivial pursuits. First, I'm going to ask you seven questions and see if you can give quick answers. Question number one. Where does the best coffee come from? Question number two. How do birds move from A to B? Question number three. What language do they speak in Germany? Question number four. Where is Stonehenge? Five. Who is the leader of the British government? Six. When did a man walk on the moon? Seven. Last question. What country does tea come from? Now, Uh, for an English teacher or an English person, these are not difficult questions. Uh, obviously, though, uh, for a student, uh, they may be extremely difficult. I don't know. Uh, there are possibly also more than uh, there is more than one possible answer for some of these questions. Uh, there was time for you to answer, to give an answer uh, during the spaces, uh, whether you think of the answer or whether you actually say the answer at home. Uh, that's your choice. Uh, that you had time for an answer. Now I, I will look again at the questions, uh, repeat the questions and, and give you a correct answer. If your answer coincides with my answer, then you're okay. Okay, let's go. Where does the best coffee come from? Da dove proviene il miglior caffè? Best answer, let's say uh, Brazil. There are other possibilities, uh, opinion, best coffee, uh, but Brazil or South America or Colombia. Did you get the correct answer? Number two, how do birds move from A to B? In che modo si spostano gli uccelli da punto A a punto B? Answer, they fly. Uh, other possible answers, uh, they walk or they swim, uh, but let's say they fly. Birds, obviously, uccelli, uh, fly, volare, okay? How do birds move from A to B? They fly. Are your answers uh, the same as my answers? Are you thinking of answers or are you repeating answers in your home, in front of your computer, wherever you are? Okay, let's go on. Number three. What language do they speak in Germany? Che lingua parla la gente in Germania? Only possible answer, German. Germans, at least uh, the majority of Germans, live in Germany and speak German. Uh, Germans do not speak Dutch. Dutch is the language they speak in Holland. Deutsch is the German word for 
German language. Uh, don't uh, get confused. Germans speak German in Germany. To tell the truth, uh, they also sometimes speak German when they are in Italy or in England, for example. Number four, where is Stonehenge? Dove si trova Stonehenge? Uh, an easy question. Uh, possible answers in England, near London, chi conosce bene l'Inghilterra? In Wiltshire. Wiltshire is one of the counties in England. Counties uh, correspond to uh, regioni in Italy. Question number five. Who is the leader of the British government? Chi è il capo del governo britannico? Uh, il biondo. Uh, Boris Johnson. Boris Johnson is the English Prime Minister and therefore the leader of the government. Maybe a little bit crazy, but uh, which politician is not a little bit crazy? Remember the word politician. Politician, like musician, mathematician, magician. What is a magician? In Italian, un mago. Un prestidigiatore, come si dice. What's the difference between a magician and a wizard? Uh, well, a, a wizard is that ancient uh, type of person who is um, a traditional figure in, in folklore history. Let's say a translation of the traditional word mago in, in Italian, uh, whereas a magician is simply a modern version of entertainer, a man who plays tricks uh, in front of people, usually a kind of an illusionist. Question number six. When did a man walk on the moon? Quando camminò un uomo sulla luna? Answer only, correct answer, 1969. 1969. Uh, remember that uh, years in English are always divided into two. 1969. 20, 21. 14, 92. We always say dates as two separate numbers. Uh, not one long number with thousands, as in Italian. 1952. Italianized 1952. Correct answer to our question, 1969. Question number seven. What country does tea come from? Da quale paese proviene il tè? Almost identical to question one, except that specifically we want to know the country. Uh, correct answer, uh, two possibilities, India or China, or also Sri Lanka, for people who know a lot about tea. So how did you uh, get on with this little quiz? Uh, it, it's not important, it doesn't matter if you answered in your head uh, thinking or if you answered aloud uh, with your voice in your kitchen or in your sitting room or wherever. Uh, that's not important. Uh, this little quiz will, will tell you your capacity to uh, comprehend and respond uh, quickly to questions, even simple questions in English. Right, now let's try some numbers. Uh, again, seven simple quick questions but uh, using numbers in place of information. Remember that uh, when you meet that famous taxi driver in London or Dublin or Sydney or San Francisco, uh, you're going to be, have to be, you're going to need to be ready with your, your money or you will have a big hole in your bank account. So you need to practice uh, understanding and uh, speaking with numbers. 
Question number one. What is four plus three? Question number two. What is four times three? Question number three. What is four divided by two? Question number four. What is five times three? Question number five. What is five times ten? Question number six. What is twenty minus ten? Last question number seven. What is twenty divided by ten? Right, uh, did you get some answers? Again, uh, I can obviously not uh, hear or correct your, your answers, but uh, if you gave some answers, you can check them now with me together. Question number one, what is four plus three? Answer, seven. Four plus three, vuol dire quattro più tre. Four plus three equals seven. Question number two. What is four times three? Uh, times indicates uh, multiplication. So the answer, what is four times three? Quattro per tre, twelve. What is four times three? Twelve. Dodici. Question number three. What is four divided by two? Uh, this is quite simple. Divided, diviso pair. What is four divided by two? Answer, two, immediately. Question number four. What is five times three? Answer, fifteen. As before, uh, times is multiplication. Uh, notice here the pronunciation, fifteen, quindici, fifteen. Accento sulla seconda parte. 15. Why is that important? Uh, we'll see now. Question number 5. What is 5 times 10? Answer, 50. 5 times 10? 50. 50. Notice here the pronunciation. 50. Accento sulla prima parte per fare distinzione tra 15 e 50, che è importante. 50. 5 times 10 equals 50. There is a big difference between $15 for a taxi ride and $50 for a taxi ride. Question number 6. What is 20 minus 10? Uh, okay, here we go to uh, subtraction. 20 minus 10. Answer is obviously 10. If you have 20 pounds in your pocket in London and you give 10 pounds to the taxi driver, then you remain with 10 pounds in your pocket to buy a beer in the bar. And maybe also a beer for your friend. Final question, again, division. What is 20 divided by 10? Answer, mathematically, 2. Using mathematics from the opposite direction, 2 times 10 is 20. Also, 10 times 2 is still 20. At the same time, mathematically, 20 divided by 10 is 2. But uh, 10 divided by 20 uh, gives a completely different answer. Right, uh, that's enough uh, English numbers and trivial questions for the moment. Uh, we have to make a, a short break uh, for advertising and important Radio Dreamland information. Uh, we'll be back uh, very shortly. Stay tuned. Meditazione planetaria del martedì. Radio Dreamland si unisce all'iniziativa della meditazione planetaria del martedì sera, organizzata dal New Earth Circle. Ogni martedì sera, alle 21, 
Vi invitiamo a partecipare alla meditazione planetaria dedicata a Madre Terra e a tutti i suoi figli di qualsiasi specie. Ognuno può unirsi al cerchio planetario dei meditanti partecipando da soli o con i propri cari per una testimonianza di pace e di spiritualità che abbracci tutto il pianeta, per un atto d'amore verso Madre Terra, per un mondo antispecista. Unitevi con noi in meditazione, seguendo la Nassinar, la musica del vuoto eseguita al flauto da Giancarlo Barbadoro. Ogni martedì alle 21, per informazioni www.newercircle.org. Radio Dreamland Share the Vision Right, you're still connected to Radio Dreamland and listening to the webcast program English Planet Conversations from uh, the worlds of the invisible uh, the English-speaking uh, worlds of the invisible To, uh, firstly, to resolve some possible mysteries from my last lesson, uh, if you remember, uh, I was uh, looking at or listening to uh, a text from uh, what was effectively a song, uh, which uh, probably everyone recognized. Uh, it was a famous song uh, entitled Imagine, uh, written by uh, a former Beatles member, John Lennon. This essentially simple song, uh, written by an essentially simple person, uh, a, young, a young boy, a young musician from Liverpool, who basically could have been any of us, for example. Uh, th this song has become a worldwide uh, symbol of protest, uh, effectively protest against uh, the condition of humanity in, in Western uh, majoritarian societies, uh, where, where people are oppressed uh, effectively by issues uh, concerning concerning money, uh, religious, uh, political divisions in society, uh, which uh, stops people basically from, uh, from living a happy life. Uh, John Lennon was uh, sharing a dream, uh, sharing a vision uh, of life, of society uh, with, with no religion, for example, and, and, and no countries, uh, both of which are religious and, and political, as I say, divisions, which, uh, which uh, obsess people uh, in, in modern consumer society, uh, obsess people and, uh, and stop them from, uh, from thinking clearly and uh, from behaving in, in a peaceful and harmonious manner uh, towards each other, creating in, instead uh, a sort of condition of permanent conflict in, in society. Uh, the situation which John Lennon uh, was thinking about in, in uh, well, 50 years ago uh, has still not changed, essentially. We, we are still in the same, if not a worse, position in society. The words of John Lennon were that it, it's, not, uh, it's not hard, it's not difficult to imagine a society without uh, religion and, and without countries, uh, great creators of conflict. And the words of John Lennon are in fact true in this. Uh, it is not difficult to do because uh, we have uh, a large uh, percentage of the population of the world, uh, natural peoples, indigenous peoples, who, who have an image of society, who have a form of society uh, which doesn't include these things. This evening I, I'd like to focus a little bit on this aspect of our society. Uh, if we want, um, our models, uh, our present existing models of a different society with different values exist in, in, uh, in the modern world of the natural peoples. Uh, but if we go back into the past, uh, we, we can find the models which have uh, now been disappeared. They have become part of an invisible world which uh, existed effectively in Europe uh, only, only, let's say, only is not a long time, uh, only uh, two thousand years ago, uh, before uh, the, the Roman period in Europe. Essentially, uh, we're, we're speaking about uh, pre-Christian and uh, essentially, uh, principally, uh, Celtic society, which, which uh, existed in Europe uh, before the Romans. Uh, it existed all over Europe, uh, including uh, Piedmont, northern Italy, uh, which has been demonstrated uh, 
incredibly clearly by uh, by the work of, of Giancarlo Barbadoro. Uh, work which uh, has reflected, uh, in reality, has reflected personally on me, uh, because I come from uh, an existing, uh, what is recognized uh, presently, currently, uh, as uh, one of uh, the Celtic parts of Europe, uh, I come from uh, the area of Cornwall in England. To be absolutely honest, uh, strictly and sincerely honest, I, I don't actually come from uh, what is modern day Cornwall. Uh, I come from Devon. Uh, Devon is the county uh, next to Cornwall in the west of England. Uh, if you look at the map, uh, you will find them very easily on Google. Uh, this is a large area of the west of England which is uh, recognized as Celtic. Uh, counties uh, counties in, in Britain, in England, uh, are administrative divisions, modern administrative divisions, in, in the same way that you have uh, Regioni in, in Italy, uh, in, in the way that uh, Piedmont is, is separate from Liguria or Lombardy, uh, Devon is technically administratively separate from, from Cornwall. Uh, but in historical and, and uh, let's say, spiritual terms, uh, Devon and Cornwall are the same thing. Uh, Devon uh, was part of the Kingdom of Cornwall, uh, even in, in recent history, uh, even possibly only one. 1,000 years ago. If you're traveling uh, as a tourist or as anyone in England and you travel west from London, uh, gradually life changes. Uh, when you reach uh, Devon, uh, which is uh, the county before you reach Cornwall, uh, you, you can see that uh, this is a different world. You can feel this is a different world. Life is different. Uh, and the people are different. Uh, when, when I was young, uh, I was always uh, I always felt slightly embarrassed uh, when people from London uh, came to Devon uh, to the, the beaches for holidays uh, where I lived, uh, because uh, people from London considered us as, as uh, sort of campagnoli, you know, uh, country people, slow and, and stupid and, and uh, almost primitive to a certain extent. Uh, this was, uh, and probably still is, uh, a reality of our modern society. Here on Radio Dreamland we, we try to uh, give visibility, uh, greater visibility, to the invisible world of, of uh, Celtic civilization, uh, which has been uh, lost and, and uh, to some extent destroyed. Uh, th this is part of the, the vision of our founder, Gian Carlo Barbadoro, which uh, we are trying to carry on and, and uh, improve I in the interests of, of uh, making people happier, uh, making life uh, a, a little better for people. Even though I now live in, in, in uh, Piedmont, in, in Turin, uh, I, I still feel uh, reverberations, I still feel interaction uh, between my, my roots in, in, in Devon and Cornwall and, and uh, my, my, the existence, which, which, uh, the history which was here in, in Piedmont, uh, Celtic history. What happens to me is, is that uh, on, on reflection, on, on researching, on, on reading, I, I constantly uh, come up with uh, pieces of the, the jigsaw puzzle, the uh, big jigsaw puzzle, uh, which involves also, which uh, goes back uh, to, to my uh, memories from, from Devon, uh, from Cornwall. In fact, uh, now I, I'd like to tell you a, a little story which comes from an area where, uh, where I was born and brought up, uh, uh, known as Dartmoor, which is a kind of a large uh, national park, uh, but it is uh, in effect a moor, which, uh, which in Italian translates in, into Brughiera. It's an area of natural beauty with uh, flora and uh, fauna which are exceptional. Uh, if we want uh, famous references, uh, recently uh, a certain American film director called uh, Steven Spielberg uh, made a film uh, on Dartmoor, uh, the story of a horse, uh, the experience of a horse which was uh, obliged uh, to participate in, in the First World War in, in the trenches of France. 
uh, filming was done in, in my home area of Dartmoor and uh, reports have it that uh, Steven Spielberg was uh, so struck by, by this uh, beautiful area that uh, he uh, almost uh, decided to come and, and live there <laughs> and he completely fell in love with the place. Now I'd like to refer to a legend from Dartmoor. Uh, it comes from a small village uh, in, in, in the middle of Dartmoor which is known as Widdicombe, Widdicombe in the Moor. Uh, the legend goes that uh, one man uh, known as Uncle Tom Cobley uh, together with six friends, uh, that means a total of seven men, uh, wanted to travel to Widdicombe uh, to take part in the, in the fair, you know, the local uh, fair, which probably was, was a summer festival. Uh, but uh, they had no transport. Uh, this was a legend when, uh, when transport was either on foot or by horse, uh, but they had no horse. Uh, so Uncle Tom Cobley asked a, a friend of his, a uh, certain Tom Pierce, uh, to, to borrow uh, his, his horse. Uh, Tom Pierce had an old uh, grey horse, uh, a female horse, uh, known in English as an old grey mare. The legend goes that uh, Tom Cobley was given permission to use the horse and he rode the horse with his six friends uh, to Widdicombe Fair, uh, but uh, never returned. Uh, Tom Pierce, uh, the owner of the horse, uh, the next day or some days later was, was uh, more and more worried because uh, his horse didn't return uh, and he said, well, where is my horse? I'd better go and look for it. Uh, and he went off on foot uh, to look for his, uh, his old grey mare. Uh, what he found was his old grey mare in the middle of a, of a road uh, surrounded by the, the seven men who were riding this horse. Uh, but unfortunately Unfortunately, or possibly uh, what you might expect, uh, the old grey mare uh, couldn't, uh, was too old to carry seven men together. Uh, so the horse effectively was, was dying, uh, and uh, the, the seven men were observing uh, the death of the horse in the middle of the road. Uh, the song is a somewhat uh, comical song, in, in fact a piece of music, but uh, at the same time sad, uh, because it involved the de death of the horse. But it, it, it's sung also in, in, a, in a kind of local dialect or, or a local accent, uh, which uh, makes it uh, entertaining. It's uh, also entertaining and curious because uh, the song uh, doesn't actually give the conclusion to the tale, except for the fact that uh, it relates that uh, as a result of this uh, incident, uh, the horse, uh, together with uh, the seven riders, uh, appear as ghosts uh, occasionally on the moor. Uh, Dartmoor itself it is a region which is uh, surrounded by and, and, and full of, of mysteries, uh, mysterious tales uh, of ghosts and, and the supernatural. So uh, this is part of uh, the, the legendary uh, existence, a legendary description of, of this particular area of Britain. Uh, what is curious and interesting uh, is that this song it is part of uh, the, the, the legend or the history of this area of Devon and Cornwall. Uh, the, the origins of the song are, are not known. Uh, it has been recorded as uh, at least uh, 200 years old, uh, but probably has origins uh, much older than this. Uh, the, the figure of the old grey mare has been uh, described uh, by, by experts uh, to some extent uh, as uh, possibly not relating in reality to a horse, uh, but more likely to relate in, in legend uh, to, to a dragon. There being links uh, to similar legends or similar legendary figures uh, in other parts of Britain and Europe. Uh, what, what is certain uh, about Dartmoor, about this uh, particular area, is uh, that it once uh, was populated uh, b before the arrival of the Romans. It was uh, populated by a uh, civilization uh, which was uh, found in all over Europe, effectively, and, and uh, were described as what I have already mentioned as the Beaker people. 
I have in fact uh, visited and, and, and seen uh, small stone circles uh, around this area, uh, which seem uh, not to be so much of astronomical or uh, spiritual significance, uh, but probably more a sign of uh, some domestic structures, houses, uh, remains of houses, but uh, circular houses uh, used by, by this uh, civilization uh, from, from 2000, 3000, 4000 years ago. If you happen to be bored or even a little desperate uh, during uh, this terrible Covid lockdown, uh, get onto Google and uh, type in uh, Dartmoor, uh, Widdicombe, Uncle Tom Cobley, uh, the old grey mare, or the Beaker people. You can find uh, references uh, either in English or also probably in Italian. Uh, and they, this uh, may be an interesting path uh, to help you share the, the vision which we have of uh, creating a civilization, a new civilization, a revived uh, civilization of, of peace and harmony. Uh, you can use your, your research or study uh, as a lesson in English. And you can compare your research uh, to uh, a lifetime of research uh, done by Giancarlo Barbadoro in investigating uh, Celtic affairs, Celtic civilization in, in uh, the Susa Valley, uh, the civilization of Rama, for example. Then, uh, just as John Lennon did, uh, imagine a better world, a better society, uh, which uh, is not impossible to do. Well, uh, time is always a tyrant and it's uh, run out again this evening. Unfortunately, I have to go. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh, please uh, get connected to Radio Dreamland again next Monday for English Planet. Good evening, everybody.